Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alec Reed. This is my channel, Alec Reads. Um, I want to put a quick disclaimer on this video just because there are some mentions of a lot of different things. Um, I wanted to mention that there are mentions of leeches um because one of my close friends said that i should mention that in my videos just because some people have really big issues with um things like that so thought i'd mention it um also um keep in mind that this is a trigger warning fan fiction um it has a lot to do with mental health, so always stop listening when you feel like it is too much for you. I want everyone to take care of themselves, so don't feel like you have to listen all the way through. If you can't, that's completely fine. I am trying to post other things so that everyone can have something. Um, but today we are reading chapters 12 to 13. Um, I hope you enjoy. Chapter 12, The Island I sat there, itching my skin like crazy. There was probably duck itch in the water by the island. All the ducks were surrounding around this small island because of the massive amounts of leeches. I had already picked all of the leeches off my body, Charlie's body, and Darcy's. Darcy couldn't even look at them. She was so disgusted. We had been sitting here for around 20 minutes. Then I say, Darcy... Have you rested enough to swim back? Only swim back if you're 100% certain you're ready. She then replies, I'm ready. Tara's probably freaking out. And the others too. We should go. I look at her and said, don't worry about the others. Only if you're ready to go. She smiles and pats me on the back and says, yep, I'm ready. Let's get out of here. I gently lifted Charlie's lifeless head and sat him up. I wanted to wake him up before we left. I couldn't tell if he was unconscious or just exhausted to the point where he couldn't do anything. Charlie, you need to wake up now. He blinks his eyes and trying to talk, but no words come out. Charlie, you don't have to say anything or do anything. I'm going to put you on my back and swim us to shore, okay? Charlie's face was switching a bit. He managed to nod his head ever so slightly. I carefully put him on my back and start swimming alongside Darcy. I grab Darcy's arm and we and link it to mine. We could still manage a full stroke while being linked together. I just needed to make sure nothing happened to her. A, after a while of swimming, we reached the shore. Darcy went running towards Dara, Tara and hugged her. And I gently shifted Charlie off my back and cradled him in my arms. I started running up the beach towards the others. They were sitting on the blanket we had set out. Elle saw me from the distance, then ran up to me and takes one of look at Charlie and asks, What's going on, Nicholas? What's wrong with Charlie? Where were you guys and why is Darcy crying? I kept running towards the others and said, No time to explain. I need to drive Charlie to the hospital now. She runs alongside me. Once I've reached the others, they all asked me the same thing. Elle said I snapped. I don't have the fucking time to explain. I just need to drive Charlie to the hospital now. After I said that, Darcy stands up, tears falling from her face, and hands me my wallet, keys, and phone. I kiss her on the cheek and said, Darcy, I will never be able to thank you enough. I love you. Her frown immediately turned into a smile. I headed towards the car as I frantically trying to open the door to the passenger seat as fast as I possibly could. Tara comes up behind me. She scooches me out of the way and says, he's unconscious. You have to recline the seat all the way back so he's lying down and don't white flash. She reclines the seat back and I place him down in the seat. She then buckles him in and locks the seatbelt tight against him so he can't move. She then leans down and kisses 
Charlie on the forehead and whispers something to him quiet. I couldn't hear. She then says, thank you for saving Darcy. She told me what happened. I smile and say, I love you and her like a sister. Of course I would save her, but I'm not the hero. She is. She risked her life to save Charlie. We exchange another smile before I get in the car and start driving towards the hospital. I wasn't a doctor, but I knew Charlie was some, there was something wrong with Charlie, and it wasn't good. Charlie, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I need you to stay with me. I can't lose you. I would be nothing without you. Life is not worth living without you. Please be okay. Five minutes into the car drive, Charlie jerks awake. He's trying to sit up, but he can't. He starts moving and twisting, trying to get out from the tight seatbelt, but he couldn't. He starts acting irrational and starts whining my name. Nick? Nick? Trying not to freak out, I say softly, Charlie, we're in the car, you're okay. Stop moving, relax. You're scaring me. He says, Nick, you're here? Where are you? My heart sank to the bottom of my chest and fell out of my body under the ground and shattered into a million pieces. Was Charlie blind? Could he not see me? This thought made me nauseated. Charlie, can you see anything? He replies after a few seconds. Yeah, but everything's spinning, and I can see patches of color everywhere. I felt like screaming, thank God. This massive relief feeling over my entire body. Baby, we're almost at the hospital, okay? I'm right beside you. Finally, we arrived to the hospital. When I unbuckled Charlie's seatbelt, he sighed in relief. I couldn't imagine how he felt. He couldn't see properly and was belted down to the seat. I myself, who gets claustrophobic super easily, could hardly think about it any longer. I picked Charlie up and carried him into the hospital. A nurse caught a glimpse of me and came rushing over. I can see... Can I see your friend, please? She exclaims. Charlie, while doing his best to open his eyes, faintly says, Who is she? Babe, she's a nurse. Remember I told you we're going to the hospital? He says, Oh, yeah. Then shuts his eyes again. Nick's perspective. I went to go get Charlie some water. He was sweating bullets. I knew he didn't want to go in the water in front of our friends because he was wearing a white shirt. It would become completely see-through. Charlie? I yell, puzzled, because I didn't see him on the beach anywhere. I run down to the lake shore and ask, where's Charlie? I brought him water because he was hot. Tao was standing beside me and said, don't worry, I fixed that problem. He was sweating a crap ton, so I just shoved him in the water. Boom. Problem solved. I scream, what the fuck is wrong with you? and push him to the ground. He landed straight on his ass. I had no time to waste on him. I needed to find Charlie. I swam out to the others and asked in a panicked state, Did you see where Charlie swam off to? El said, No. Why? What's happened? Then Tara said, I'm pretty sure Darcy said something about going to talk to Charlie. She kind of sounded worried. What's going on? Before answering her, I just started swimming and then got blinded by a shiny object in the distance. Then I looked closer and it was the gold clasp shining on Darcy's swimsuit. I dart towards her. Finally, I come up behind her and say, while huffing, do you know where Charlie is? She turns around crying. Her arm was around Charlie unconscious. She could barely hold his head above the water. I look at her in shock. Take Charlie out of her arms. She was barely bre- he was barely breathing. She was exhausted from holding them both above water. She was hysterically crying and says, Thank God you came. I didn't think we were going to make it back. The nurse said he was in an emergency, but she put him on a stretcher and placed us in a small room with curtains for walls. We were supposed to wait here until a doctor could check out Charlie. After half an hour of waiting, Charlie says, Nick, please don't leave me. I'm scared. 
I burst out. Charlie, I would never leave you. I then crawled up to the stretcher beside him and laid there with him. Chapter 13. Hospital. Two hours of waiting later. I was playing on my phone while waiting for the doctor to come assist Charlie. Panda Pop was my favorite iPhone game because of the cute little pandas. Hi, is that Charlie Spring? The doctor says as he points to Charlie lying on the stretcher. Yes, he's Charlie Spring. I quickly replied. I was so antsy just to know if there was something seriously wrong with him. He looked over Charlie. He did a few blood tests and other things to him. He was typing away on his computer and checking out Charlie. Hi, sorry to bother you, but do you know what's wrong with him? He looks at me and gives me a stern look. Son, your friend will be fine, but I can't classify info to friends. Do you have his girlfriend's number or any of his family's numbers? I kind of chuckled a little under my breath. Um, sir, I'm his boyfriend of six years, I said. He was old and seemed very old school, but I didn't expect him to say what he said. Oh, God, maybe instead of taking him to the hospital, you should have admitted him to conversion therapy along with yourself. I have dealt with rude comments and judgmental looks, but this was disgusting. I didn't trust him dealing with handling Charlie when Charlie was in no state to defend himself. The next nurse I saw, I walked over and called for her. Miss, excuse me, I know you're probably busy, but can I speak to you for a minute? Oh, darling, of course. She was a sweet lady and had most beautiful braids, filled with all kinds of fun colors. This doctor right here is being extremely homophobic and menacing to my almost unconscious boyfriend. Being his only advocate here, I want him to have another doctor, please. I'm concerned for his safety. She looked shocked and then angry. You're one smart young man. And on my behalf of the hospital, I'm so sorry. I will let his doctor know that he can't continue his inspection. And we'll get him a new doctor immediately. Thank you so much. I say, I could see Charlie from a distance the whole time I was talking to the nurse. Just to make sure he didn't do anything to him. I walked back to the room to sit and watch until the nice nurse I just talked to came in and said, Dr. Kev, you've been kicked off this inspection and Dr. Trace will be taking over. The doctor looked mad but left in a hurry. Just him touching my Charlie made me feel sick. But I'm happy Charlie wasn't conscious enough to hear that horrible comment. Things like that suck with Charlie a lot more than they did with me. Hi, you must be Charlie Springs' boyfriend, correct? Dr. Trace had said. Yep, I replied. She then goes on. Well, I need to admit him. He's clearly not fully conscious. I don't know how long yet we need to wait for some test results to come back still. I will set him up and you can just wait in this room till he's all set up. I thought he would have been admitted, but hearing this news still hurt. Okay, I'll wait here, I say. She then takes Charlie into the elevator. All I could do now was wait. 30 minutes later. Hi, he's ready and should be waking up soon if you want to come see him. Dr. Trace said, yes, please take me to him. She leads me to the elevator to floor four, sector 10. The patients were divided by curtains and all of them looked sickly. She said, he's in lot six at the very end, before rushing off to save someone else. I walked down, and when I saw him, I felt so guilty. He was lying there with a feeding tube hooked up to him. When I had to go to a a mental hospital, he said they treated him with what he didn't eat, all his meals and snacks. It was his worst nightmare. Then he wakes up and he's going to freak out. They also had an IV hooked up to his arm. Charlie was also petrified of needles. I sat there in the chair beside him for another 45 minutes just talking to him, just in case he could hear me. I wanted him to wake up to the sound of my voice. My head popped up when I heard, Nick? 
I want to go home. Charlie was awake and looked so much better. His eyes were wide open and his voice sounded natural. Charlie, you can't just yet, but probably soon. You look a lot better, I say, while kissing him on the forehead. Charlie's hand goes up to his nose and starts tugging on the feeding tube. I grab his hand and intertwined our fingers. He tried to get his hand free from mine, but I didn't let him. Nick, stop. Let me go. Charlie, you need to not touch that, okay? Don't freak out, but you have a feeding tube so you can regain your strength again. He starts to panic and frantically look around like I was hurting him or something. I knew in that moment he wasn't fully himself. He was still in a state of shock. Let go of me, he says, while trying to tug his hands away from mine. Charlie, please stop, I say calmly. I didn't really know what to do, except I knew that if I let go, he would try to rip out his feeding tube, and that could be dangerous, so I didn't let go. Let me go, let me go, let me go, he says while sobbing. I never felt like more of an asshole in my life. I felt heartbroken. I've never seen Charlie like this before. He was acting crazy. I knew if I called the nurse, he would be strapped down and I couldn't do that to him. It would break him. The only thing I could think of was to call Tori. She would always call him down. I held both of his hands with one of mine and rang Tori. Alright, that is the end of chapter 13. Um, Once again, there's just an overall trigger warning for the rest of this series. Um, It can get pretty dark at times, and there are also, like, homophobic comments. So if you're not cool with those things, just make sure that you're being careful and generous to yourself um, and keeping yourself safe. Um, But this is the end of our reading for today. Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and I hope you have a great rest of whatever time it is for you. Um, Goodbye, ladies, gentlemen, and everything in between. Bye-bye, friends.